What's going on, YouTube fam? It's your main man, David, back on the mic. And we're here predicting the wild card games. Now, this should be going up on the Friday before the first games. And I'm very excited. Um, The... Div no. Did I say wild card games? <laughs> I meant divisional games. I did the wild card games um, already. And I went three and three. I predicted bills would win they did win i predicted chiefs would win they did win and i predicted buccaneers would win they won lions won packers won and the texans won i would take 500 but we're going for 100 percent on these divisional games now to my left you can see Now, now, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Check, make sure. And before, and before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Just go click it, click it, hit that bell to stay notified for any future videos on Bell Don't Lie, where we're talking all things sports. And make sure to give the video a like and comment down below what you think of my opinion so far. All right, starting in our divisional round playoff matchups we're gonna start with what i think is the most clear-cut game of the weekend which is going to be lions buccaneers i am picking the detroit lions to win this game picking the lions to win for many reasons picking the lions to win over the Bucks, I think the Bucks played well. <clears throat> Picking the Lions over the Bucks, because while I think the Bucks played well last week, I think the Lions just the destiny, the mojo they have going right now. They are one game away from an NFC Championship after not being in the playoffs for thirty plus years. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to the Lions. Although there is a path. To victory for the Buccaneers if the Buccaneers can do a good job of disguising their defensive coverages pre-snap versus what's gonna go on post snap and confusing Jared Goff and forcing him into a couple turnovers and also if those Buccaneers receivers can take advantage of a weak secondary like they did with uh, with uh, the Eagles um, I think there's a path to victory there because Jared Goff he was confident the Rams did get some pressure on him at times, but it wasn't consistent. So Jared Goff was able to get into a rhythm, throw, throw with anticipation. And if the Bucks can do a good job of speeding him up, disguising their coverages, um, they can force him into a couple turnovers. And Evans, Godwin, uh, David Moore, uh, Reynolds, Kate Otten, they can take advantage of this not so great Bears, uh, not Bears, not so great line secondary. There's definitely a pact to victory. We saw what Puka Nakua did against um, this team. Baker Mayfield's been playing well. I think he will continue to play well. I just think the Lions are, are the better team. They are the better team for sure. And just the mojo right now, the way things are going, I don't think the Lions get beat here. They do lose in the NFC Championship game to my winner of San Francisco Green Bay. My winner of San Francisco Green Bay is the Niners now similar similarly with the Lions and the Buccaneers the Packers have a path to victory the blueprint to beat the 49ers is to turn Brock the blueprint to beat the 49ers is to turn Brock Purdy over we saw what the Ravens did against the 49ers they did a great job disguising and just Kyle Hamilton we saw what the 40, we saw what the Ravens did against the 49ers. They did a great job of disguising the Kyle Hamilton pick. He probably was not supposed to be there according to you know their play call. They did a great job of making Brock Purdy speed up, not get into a rhythm, and turn him over. Honestly, that's a lot that's the way you beat a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL defensively. But it just showed so glaringly against the Ravens in that game. But I still think the Niners are the best team in the league and player for player the most talented. I think that game against the Niners was a fluke game. 
I think the Packers will put up a good fight. Jordan Love will show himself well. Jordan Love, it, after that performance, solidified his place as a top 10 quarterback, in my opinion. And Aaron Jones has come to life here in the playoffs. If they can run the ball like they did and Jordan Love can throw with anticipation, with the accuracy, and if he can throw and throw with anticipation and accuracy in the face of pressure like he did. He would do all those back foot throws, diamond his receivers up. He would play a perfect game. If he can do that, there's a path to victory if the Packers can stop the 49ers defensively. Now, moving on to the AFC, we have the Ravens and the Texans. Well, the Texans are a great story. CJ Stroud, rookie quarterback, getting them their first playoff win since 2019. D'Amico Ryans, rookie head coach, Bobby Sloak in the offensive play calling, Nico Collins breaking out as a receiver. The Texans defense revamped. You got Grenard, Barnett, Will Anderson on that defensive line wrecking havoc. I think the miracle run ends here and the Baltimore Ravens beat the Houston Texans. I just think Lamar Jackson is on a run. <laughs> I think Lamar Jackson is about to go on a historic run. Lamar Jackson, I think unfairly, has something to prove. He's got to prove to people that he can perform in the playoffs. When the last couple of times in the playoffs, the team, the roster surrounding him has not been that great. But now there's no excuses. He's got receivers. Mark Andrews might be coming back. That's another layer of no excuses. Defensively, this is the best defense in the league statistically. He has no excuses. He's got to go out there and prove that this possibly second MVP is not a fluke. I mean, he's won 20, 2019 MVP unanimously. The only other quarterback, I think, player in the playoffs with an MVP is Patrick Mahomes. So he's got to go out there and prove. I mean, Mahomes has two rings. If Mahomes didn't win jack crap for the rest of his career, he would still be considered all-time great. He's got two MVPs, two Super Bowl MVPs, two Super Bowls. Everything he does from here is just icing on the cake, just climbing up wherever he is. But Lamar doesn't have that. He's got to build his resume, and I think he's going to prove that against the Texans. Um, if the Texans' D-line can force Lamar to make decisions quickly, Lamar succeeds when he has a lot of time. You can see he's just there, bobbing, bobbing, bobbing. And he's done a good job of just running, taking off when he needs to, instead of just, okay, first read's not there, I'm going to go. He's been a good job being patient, looking to make plays from the pocket and setting his feet outside the pocket, make plays downfield and running when he has to. So the D line can force him to make decisions quick in the face of pressure, slow that offense down. I think CJ Stroud and the Texans offense is prolific enough to score enough against the Ravens defense to win if they can do that. But I think that task is just too tall for this young Texans team. And I think the Ravens beat the Texans. Now, our last game of the weekend is the closest game of the weekend. It's the game I'm most excited for because this Josh Allen Mahomes kind of, if you want to call it a rivalry in the playoffs, has been very one-sided. I mean, 13 seconds, am I right? <laughs> but, you know, I'm excited for this game because Josh Allen, while he's been turning the ball over a lot, offensively, he has been on a tear. I think he's got, like, what, 45 total touchdowns in the regular season, played pretty good against the Steelers the Bills played them a little closer than for my personal liking but they still played them very well Patrick Mahomes and that Chiefs offense played great in that cold um the only thing was the red zone offense they settled for a lot of field, goal, field goals they weren't able to cash in a lot and their defense looked great fantastic they gave up that one big play which was an under throw anyways to Tyreek Tyreek just made a good adjustment on the ball the defense is looking good um, and I think this game will be a close game. What I think will be what I think will be the deciding factor is the Buffalo Bills defensive injuries. They got injuries at corner, they got injuries on linebacker, and the Chiefs like to work and and the Chiefs like to work the middle of the field. Those deep crossers uh, with Rasheed Rice with Tyrese Kelsey, those are their bread and butter. Mahomes likes to hit them coming across the middle of the field. That's where these linebackers are going to be. And with backup linebackers, with backup corners in there, um, I don't think the Bills will, will be able to edge this one out. So I think the Kansas City Chiefs edge it out over the Buffalo Bills, giving us a Chiefs-Ravens 
uh, conference championship and a Lions Niners NFC championship. Before you go, before you go, make sure to follow me on all my social platforms. Follow the ball don't lie on my social platforms, my personal Instagram, my personal Twitter, and the channel Instagram and channel TikTok. I am there posting shoulder form content. Make sure to keep up with ball don't lie if you like more sports content. And with that being said, these are my predictions. Let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure to like, subscribe, share the whole ordeal. If you like sports, because we're talking all things sports here on Ball Don't Lie. And I will see you guys in the next one.